is Libya. Is Libya a part of Hizkiel's, Ezekiel, Nebiu Hizkiel's prophecy? Is Hizkiel prophecy being fulfilled in the current events that we're witnessing in Gaddafi's, Gaddafi's uh, Libya? Now, the news has reported, and we're here, we're going to check uh, Deutsche Welle again, the Balmarinha, the Amharic site of the Deutsche Welle, and there's a long, very detailed article, and we hope to be able to show you some of the, some of the visual elements of this particular article, and this particular article is... Um, entitled the the steps of war is from the 20th uh libyana yemen gestatu yetor erinja libya and the nations the nations uh the progress of war the progress of war yeah rabawian men gestatina ye arab legal tenant paris light yeah moama gaddafin katafin malet Heil the mom can uh kata katesma katesma bechwala ka tenanta mishit jamro betele ye fanatai ye ingles in na ye united states ye tor hilo ch ye konole la katafina kulf ye tor sefaroch ye de bedabuno. This is explaining how the Western nations in the Arab League uh, yesterday in Paris, they had basically uh, uh, agreed, agreed with the sanctions and the no-fly zone, and also to take a more proactive step against um, Gaddafi. And they said the key in this strategy, the Gulf, um, yeah, Colonel Gaddafi, na Gulf, yeah, Tor Seferoch, yeah, the bed No, that the key. The key uh, war sites were bombed, Gaddafi's uh, key war sites. And we said this is a very long article, and there was a, a flash update. Um, when we came and we checked the online, we had a flash update about the bombing, and we had caught it actually uh, last night, which was the eve. Interesting, that's the eve of uh, Purim, the eve of Purim, the, the, the Sabbath, the, the Shabbat. And if you know some of the facts uh, concerning Purim, and it's just interesting how all of these matters, when properly understood, um, relate one to another and can uh, give us an insight into the Almighty's, um, the Almighty's outworkings, the outworkings of His prophecy. For example, the Shabbat Zakor, Shabbat Zakor, or the Sabbath of Remembrance, and it falls on. The, the Saturday that precedes Purim. Now, Purim is on the 14th of Adar, and the 14th of Adar is actually today, which is March 20th. Now, the eve was the 19th of March, and in the Hebrew calendar, that's the 13th of Adar, and that was a Shabbat or a Senbet, a Saturday. So that's Shabbat Zakor, Shabbat Zakor. So these are some less known observances of the Furim or Purim season. Now, Purim is also interesting in its name, Fur, from Fur or Pur or the Akkadian Puru. Now, what does Puru, Min Malet, Puru Min Malet, you know, what does Puru mean? It's interesting because uh, Betargum, Fur, Betargum, Bamarinya, is in translation, the, the, the Fur, we say Fur, uh, the other so-called Jews, they say poor, but it comes from the Akkadian um, and it's translated to mean uh, itta, and itta is dice. Itta is dice because if you know the story of the Metafe Astir in the book of Esther, the story is that Hama, Hama, you know, or Haman, Haman was conspiring a, a plot to exterminate the black Jews of Persia. 
You know what I'm saying? So originally we have to understand also the, the racial dynamics of this. There's a racial dynamic of it, and the racial dynamic in a lot of uh, Bible scholars and others who are looking at the end time signs and trying to see, well, is this is this Daniel's prophecy? Is this is this Ezekiel's? What Ezekiel saw? This war that Ezekiel saw is the war of Ezekiel linked with Armageddon, and in what way? And some have even confounded these different areas of scripture not understanding that each prophecy is showing a certain even in the prophecies there are prophecies so in the particular prophecies some of them link with other prophecies and other prophecies stand alone so this is what it means by rightly dividing rightly rightly dividing study to show yourself approved as a workman that need not to be ashamed because a lot of bible scholars even some previously you understand have um, said that this is this prophecy, that is that prophecy so from someone, and none of those things came to pass. And when we look at the geopolitical dimensions of it, especially with this internet and information society, and information can go to and fro, and, and the postings, there, there's an amount of due diligence that's necessary. But what's interesting is that the, the passage that is usually um, spoken on the Shabbat Zakor, which is the Sabbath of remembrance that falls on, that occurs on the Saturday that precedes Purim. So in this 2011, and also remember the heavenly signs of the moon and the 18 year cycle of the moon needs to be connected. So there's, there's prophetic signs that are being shown to us this particular Purim and this particular Furim season that we're in. We have the Shabbat Zakor, you understand, which was the 19th of March, the Hebrew calendar, the 13th of Adar, which is the eve of Purim, Shabbat Zakar. And there's a reading that is usually read on the particular Shabbat, and that reading is from Deuteronomy. Let's go here to Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 verses 17 to uh, 19. So let's go to Orit, the Orit Zedagim, and go over the reading for the Shabbat Zakar, the Shabbat Zakar, which is the Sabbath that precedes Purim. Today, the 20th of March, 2011, is the, the Purim, is the Purim. Now, when we look at the, the geopolitical dimensions and the global prophetic and the earth crisis, the earth crisis that we are presently in, all of these signs, you understand, and warnings and, and information actually links into a, a, a unified field, a certain consciousness. But what we need to do is to understand and receive what the Holy Spirit and the Almighty is showing us and not to add what we want or our preconceived notions to it, you understand, but be able to receive, be conformed to the image in the words of his son. Now, the reading, what was the reading? Deuteronomy Orit Zedagim, uh, chapter, chapter 25 of Orit, uh, Orit Zedagim, some basic facts about Purim, Purim. Well, did you know? that Purim could be translated as the dice, a roll of the dice, because Hama or Haman rolled the dice to find out what day would be appropriate for his evil plot to genocide the black Jews or the Hebrews of Persia, the Ehud of Persia. And so he rolled the Fur or the Pur, the Purim. You understand? He rolled the dice. But his plot, to exterminate or genocide, or you could even say Holocaust, the, the Hebrews of Persia, who were the black Jews of Persia, the Ethiopian Hebrews of Persia. And when we say Ethiopian, let's, let's make a little note right here because terminologies in different times take on different connotations. Now we have, we have the roots and the originations of it, but they said, judge the tree by the fruit. You understand? We don't really judge the tree by the root because sometimes we can't see the root. Truly, a tree does or must have roots 
in order to be fruitful in order to stand so so roots are important you understand but when we're judging a tree we have to judge by its roots uh, by its fruit excuse me by its fruit and not by its roots and not by its roots so we're judging the tree by its fruits but we need to understand what the roots when we speak about I and I once lost now found Beta Israel and the importance of the Metzafer Astia, the importance of the story of Esther, especially as we're moving into this prophetic time, because it gives us some background, much needed background on the modern current events that we are seeing, you know, that, that, that we are witnessing and even increasingly becoming involved in many of these current events. So the Shabbat Zakor, the Sabbath of Remembrance, which occurs on the Saturday preceding Purim, this year it is the Saturday, the Saturday preceding Purim, you understand, was yesterday, and now this is Purim or Furim, right? And this is what's read in the synagogue or the Mikorah, the Mikorah, and it's Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 17 to verse 19. Now, it's very interesting as well that this is the Abi Tom season among, among the, the Ethiopian Christians and, and, and the Eastern or the Oriental Christians is the great, the great Lent, what's known as the Great Lent in Ethiopia, we say Hudade, or it's also known as the Abi the Abit Om, and this is like around the third week of it. The third week is something called Mikorab. Mikorab. Now we know that Mikorab means a synagogue. It means the synagogue. You understand? In the Ethiopic. Now there's a link with the Ethiopic Orthodox Christian calendar. You understand? When we look on the calendar and recognize that the third week of the Abit Om is called Mikorab. And the Sabbath or the Shabbat, the Senbet, uh, that occurs, precedes Purim, is known as the Shabbat Zakor or the Sabbath of Remembrance. And on that day, Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 17 to verse 19, is read in the synagogue. And this passage is a reminder, it's a reminder, Metasebia, of the plot the plot, the plan, the scheme, the scheme that the scheme is scheme against the true Beta Israel and against Israel that was contemplated by Amalek, by Amalek, you understand? And the latter evil plans in the same evil spirit of Hama, of Ama, Hama, ones known as Haman, the Agagite or the Apep, Apophis. You understand, of the seed, he's of the seed. Haman was of the seed of the Apophis, and he is also thought to be an Amalekawian or a Amalekite. So let's go to the scripture and let's read this portion of scripture from 17, from 17 to uh, 19. Besam Abba, we were lida, we manifest adus ahadu amlakam. Orita Zedagim Mirafa Haya Mista Kakutera Asra Sabat Iska Asra Zetain Kagut Abewet Achu Gize Amalek Abemen Gedela Yadaregem Behina Asiba. Remember what Amalek did to thee by the way when ye when ye all when all of our ancestors were come forth out of egypt when the ayud you understand or the black jews or the ethiopian hebrews we say ethiopians to refer that they were not european so-called jews or european hebrews you understand which is you know but they were black you understand to refer to what we know today racially as so-called African Americans and, and Africans in the Caribbean and, and the South and Central America or black people or the by the byword Negroes 
uh, the byword is Negro for the Beta Israel. The key byword is Negroes. You understand? So this says to remember, to remember, to think about. Kagut bewatachu gize amalek bemen gedalai ya darega behin asip bemen gedalai in the tek awem ante matesno deka mehim asale ka ante bechala deka mo ye neberutin ohulu in the meta. Egazi ave herinima alaferam. How he met thee by the way and smote the hind most or the hinder, the back part of thee, the back part of the people, even all that were feeble, even all the, 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 the weak ones, like the, 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 the children, the women, the older people who during the Exodus were at the rear of the people, Amalek, you know saying? He smote, he struck, he hit, he attacked the hinder part and the weakest part, the feeble, who were behind when thou was faint, when the people were faint and were weary. And then as we would say, as Ainai Rastafari would say, when Ainai was dead for hunger, you know, when ones and ones were dead for hunger, like almost because of hunger, you are faint, you are, you are weary. But Amalek did not fear Egezi Abeher Lotu He did not fear Yahweh Buruku. Egezi Abeher Nima Alifaram. He did not fear Silezi Amalak Egezi Abeher Tewurusat Zenda. Be me set him dera Kania Kabuhut Alato Chehe Hulu Amlak Egezi Abehera Basaf Refegize Ye Amalek in a Zikre Sumuna Kasamai Betacha at a foe Yeninatursa. Therefore, it shall be silazi, therefore, ergo silazi, amlak egzi avihir to worsat zend bemi set himidur kamiya kababu telatoche hulu amlak egzi avihir basar fehgize ya amalek in ya amalek in zikra simun kasamai. Betach at fau yihinin atersa. Therefore, it shall be when Yahweh, our Elohim, Eloheinu, hath given us rest, have given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, from all the haters round about, whether it's the enemies we have here, or whether in the west, or whether it's our enemies in the east. You understand? In the land which Yahweh Eloheinu, which Amlakachin Egezi Avihir giveth thee, that he what he gives us, our promised land for an inheritance to possess it. You know why the war, you know why they're, they're fighting actually over our inheritance land, which the Almighty, you understand, the creator of heaven and earth and the sea has given to his people. And it's a racial, it's an ethnic people. And yes, they are black. Yes, they are niggers. Yes, they are Negroes. That's the half of the story they don't want to tell you. You understand? But it says that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek. You understand? Or ye Amalek in Zikre Simun, the remembrance of the name of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. You understand? This is where the idea, you understand, of never forgetting. Never forget. Never forget. You understand? I and I, we cannot forget so-called slavery. Do you remember? You understand? Burning, I think it was a burning spear. You understand? Do you remember the days of slavery? You understand? We can never forget. Baran Selassie, Bob Marley also says, um, um, Never forget, you understand, how they sold us. You understand, we cannot forget. See, that's a part of, 
prophecy. It's not the woe me or, 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 or it's not for so-called a white man's sake or for, you know, the, the guilty white people or whatever, you know, white man's guilt or whatever they want to call it. It's not for that. You know what I'm saying? It's not for a temporal thing. You know what I'm saying? But it's for a spiritual reality. But too, too often, you know what I'm saying? Too often the false prophets and the pastors and the preachers, you know what I'm saying, who are not preaching the true word, you know what I'm saying, of Scripture according to its realistic and its the logical conclusion of the matter, but are still preaching plantation, so-called whitewashed Christianity. You know what I'm saying? So the people are lost, that we don't recognize the significance of the times. When these people say, do you know what time it is? You understand? Can you recognize the signs? Can you tell time? When people talk about the signs of the time, the question really needs to be asked, can people tell time? Spiritually speaking, you know what I'm saying? Spiritually speaking, can they tell time? Can they look at the current events of the time and recognize, well, where are we in prophecy, you understand? And what word of scripture, you understand, can illuminate and guide in this in this time of of ignorance and darkness and evil you understand and every manner of evil prophesied evil is coming down you understand upon this particular humanity because of where we're where we're at at this present at this present time so we say this as a kind of a foreword this is a foreword you understand to is libya you understand is 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 libya and what's happening in libya a part of Hizkiel, Nebiu Hizkiel's tin beat, or Ezekiel's prophecy. Now there was a article that was um, that was written by Edward uh, Henson in 1986 that we were able to recover online, and it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting article because I've, I've heard and I've listened to a lot of um, uh, Anglo-American uh, preachers. You know what I'm saying? Preach about the Middle East and the end times and, and the day of the Lord and what's going to happen and where we're at. You probably also have seen some of these, whether they're te television evangelicals or so forth. Some, but some of the ones who have gone into some of the real teachings and the historical facts behind, you know, behind um, prophecy and behind modern times. We find that to be very instructive and very interesting. And unfortunately, a lot of children go to school even college and sometimes never learn really the key facts or factors and this is largely because the bible has been taken out of the so-called classroom you understand why america the descent of america is because and we're not just saying the bible in the sense of of, of white western uh, fundamentalism you understand because there's a there's an extremism you, not just among the so-called Arabs and, and the Mohammedans and the Muslims, you understand, but we have it among the so-called Jews, you understand, in particular the European Ashkenazi Jews and the fundament and the Zionists. We have it among the European, the Anglo-Americans, including the whole racial dimension. That's a very key part of it, and it's always suppressed when ones are talking about biblical prophecy. You understand, when they're speaking about biblical prophecy, in other words, we know in real time the, the, the issue of race has a great place in, in the social debate. I mean, we know this on a day-to-day. -day, even when they want to say it's a post-racial society, race comes back even stronger than ever. You understand, but yet it's a suppress, it's a hush kind of an issue as far as to really discuss the truth, to really use this free speech to speak the word of truth. You understand? The truth may be an offense, but the truth is not a sin. The truth is not a sin. So let's get into this particular article. You understand? This particular article, we just wanted to note the Shabbat Zakor. You understand? The, the, the Sabbath of remembrance that proceeds in the particular reading from the Orit Zedagim. You understand? From, from the uh, uh, Deuteronomy. You understand from from Deuteronomy because it's um it's important and it's very important for us to see the connection between Amalek.
between Haman, you know what I'm saying, and between even the old time pirate, you know what I'm saying, the old time pirate who who robbed I and sold I to slave ships, you know what I'm saying, and and to recognize the the fullness of this prophecy that is that is unfolding. So let us get into the next portion of the subject matter that we would like to touch on, and once again. Uh, uh, may you have a joyful Purim, Purim, Melkam Purim, Melkam Purim, Metasebia to to you all, to you, to your family, and we 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 pray that all is well for you in the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christos. Jesus Christos, the glory of Kedus Abatachin. Amen and Amen. His Imperial Majesty said that no one knows like what will strike the match. You understand?